Okay, welcome to our cable shootout. And we're using a U87. We're going to be comparing uh, Mogami cable. We have some Canary cable here. We also have some Gepco cable laying around from doing live sound stuff, some Belden cable, some Monster 1000 cable, some install grade, I think it's Gepco, but either way, it's like a thin cable that we made and it's like made for line level stuff. And uh, Apogee AES EBU cable, which is also XLR and also has uh, it like it's made for digital, so it's 110 ohms. So we're going to hear what that sounds like as well, because apparently you can also try to use one of these, but you're going to have a different sonic characteristic. And we're going to also explore the different sonic characteristics of spoken word and also on guitar today. So immediately you can tell, like, this uh, sounds good. This is the Mogami Quad Star cable. It's a quad cable design. So you have two conductors for your ground, I mean, two conductors for your, your hot, two for your neutral, and one is your ground, which is, which is your shield. And that's the um, also the way the this cable is made. So you heard my voice here. I'm going to get a little closer. That's pro to get proximity effect. We're on a cardioid pattern. We're not doing any low cut or filtering of any sort. All right. Now we're going to just listen to it with some guitar and kind of hear the, the sonic textures of this cable. All right, now we're going to switch over to Canary Cable. And, oh, this is the Canary Cable, Quad Star Cable that I like to use a lot. And you can hear the sound of my voice. It almost feels like a uh, really nice uh, high frequency presence there. A lot of lift, a lot of air to the sound um, compared to the Mogami Cable. Also, the, the bass is not bad either. It's there. and. Uh, so you can sort of hopefully hear, you might want to go back and listen to the Kinar the Mogami cable and then A-B it directly just to hear the voice um, talking, All right? So that's the sound of this cable going through a U87. It also kind of highlights some of the characteristics of the U87, some airiness that the U87 is capable of producing. It's got a lot, lot, of, lot of frequency responses that make the U87 a great mic. But we're going to also listen to guitar now. Wow, hopefully you can hear that. It's a quite a different sound. It's like we just made two type of different kinds of tones with without EQing, without compression, without any effects. And we heard a difference. All right, now with using uh, Studio Magic, we're gonna switch over to our, uh, our Gepco cable. Okay, we have the Gepco cable here. It's just a, your standard three conductor cable running into a U87 and uh, hopefully you can hear what I'm hearing right now so uh, the um, high-end lift is you can hear it sounds pretty accurate still but it's not as airy as the as the um, canary cable and it's it's got a nice decent sound to it sounds like a decent signal but the microphone also is a decent microphone so you and also we have a running into the RME UFX preamps which are really decent as well all right, so now we're going to hear a little bit of this guitar. Yeah. Interesting. 
has a nice body characteristics. That's why I typically find with uh, thicker uh, cables, sometimes has better uh, low mid response. Okay, now we're, the next cable we're going to run into is this Belden cable. We're going to switch it in five, four, three, two, one. And here we are with the Belden cable. And this one in particular is called the 8412 the 8412 cable and uh, I found this in my garage and I thought I would throw this in the mix. So the Belden cable, interesting uh, sound characteristics here. Hopefully you can hear the difference. Some people are like cables cable and I don't hear a difference and that's because maybe you're listening on really bad speakers or your, your phone and you don't have headphones in so make sure you're listening with headphones in because uh, you get a more accurate representation of the sonic subtleties of the, the sonic signature of each cable. All right, now we're gonna hear some, some guitar. So that was the Belden 8412 cable. We're going to now switch it over to another cable, the Monster 1000 cable in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, look at, look at here. We got the Monster 1000. Sometimes you will see this on sale, a 20 footer mic cable selling for about almost $200. And, uh, you were like, why? I wonder why. It's like, oh, well, I wonder why too. And we are listening to this. It's kind of silky presence to it. I like it. It's kind of silky. It's nice. Okay, that's uh, this is my voice. Now let's listen to with what guitar sounds like. Let me uh, get it positioned correctly here. All right. <laughs> Crazy cable, it has a mind of its own. Also sounded nice, nice and rich. I liked the, the sound. I don't know if I'd buy a lot of it because it's so expensive, but it's a really nice cable. Now let's switch it up. We're going to go to this mystery install grade cable, normally found in patch bays and in uh, in uh, like the in snakes and stuff. So I think this is a Belden cable install great cable all right let's switch it off three two one okay look at what we got we got this install grade cable here and it's like poppy because it's uh, a little trashy i use trashy connectors on it because it's like you know the ends of the cables that when we cut off to customize cable i'm like i'm just gonna make little interconnects right so this cable has a really nice sizzle to it but at the same time it's like not a lot of body to it and uh but Sometimes that's a good thing if you want that sound, okay? But now we're going to hear it with some guitar. All right, that's the uh, install grade cable. Next, we're gonna run into this cable. This is an Apogee Digital AES EBU cable. AES EBU, what does that mean? That's A AES stands for Audio Engineering Society and EBU stands for European Broadcast Union. And like, what the heck? Why is it that like that? It was like they needed a standard for digital professional connectors. Like what exists already? Well, XLRs exist. Let's make a digital cable out of it that carries a stereo signal. Well, and also make it for a standard of 
of 110 ohms resistance, blah, 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 blah. Therefore, we call it AES cable, not XLR, okay? And 54321. Oh, yeah, this is Apogee cable. Apogee does make cable, I think. I bought this a long time ago. Maybe they stopped, but you might find some on eBay. I don't know. But <laughs> this is really meant for digital audio cable, but uh, they also said it, when I bought it that you can actually use it for, for mic cable as well. And it kind of sounds like it. Sounds okay. Sounds like mic cable. Could be the, the microphone so good it doesn't care what cable is plugged into it. It's like, I don't care, man. I don't care. I'm a U87. All right, let's listen to some guitar. <laughs> Right. Next, we're going to run into the Kiwi in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, we got the Kiwi cable by Blue Baltic Latvian Universal Electronics, but well, also known as Blue. So this is also a quad cable design, and the Kiwi to me is pretty neutral in general. It's a pretty neutral cable. And it's not hyped on either end, so you're hearing the the very low end. It's not super hypey, but it feels pretty honest in in general. It's like if you want, it's kind of weird. It's like color less, less color, more neutral. It's like those are all really subjective terms, and I'm just maybe the power of suggestion is making you think that you're hearing it because I said it. But uh, <laughs> I like to think of it as a neutral cable. All right, let's listen to uh, guitar. <laughs> yeah, you probably heard it too, like it's like, like slightly more neutral. It doesn't really ha anything super special about that sound. But it's uh, it feels pretty honest though. It feels pretty flat, in a good way. Like, like you know, not hypey. But sometimes that's a bad thing. Sometimes you just want it to just sit in the mix the way you want it to sit, and not work on it. Okay, but that's it. Cool. Now the next thing. Oh, dude, did we actually? We got through all those cables. Those are single cables now. Now let's sound. Let's hear what this sounds like, with. Remember the color of the monster? Now let's mix up the monster and the install grade in the same chain. What does that sound like, boys and girls? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And we have here a combination of Canary Cable, Quad Star, going into some Monster 1000. And we hear a slightly different sonic, sonic signature, right? Now, if you want to just A, B, these, go back in the video and just listen to them by themselves, and you're going to hear this one, and this one sounds a little different, but when you put them together, they kind of join forces a little bit, slightly, okay? It's not always the best idea to combine cable, but sometimes you have a cable that's proprietary made for a stereo mic, and that mic cable sounds thin, going through traditional maybe uh, canary cable. So before the preamp, you can also plug in a Monster 1000 cable and that, or before even the canary cable, it'll sound different. So we're gonna hear guitar. I remember I was playing. Oh, you're too close now. There you go. I think you're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that bass uh, sounded nice. Um, not a lot of mid bass, but it had the nice deeper lower end bass.
space to it, which I thought was pretty nice, which is unexpected, right? You know, different combinations, different sounds. All right, we're gonna reverse the order of these microphones. Five, four, three, two, one. And we now have Monster Cable into the uh, the microphone, the U87, then followed by Canary into our preamp. It's got a nice, uh, silky smooth texture to it. I wonder, it's if there is any different, it's so subtle right now, I'm probably have to go back and A-B it, but it has a nice, almost like a nice, gritty high end but not a bad grit a nice nice grit like and some texture to it some crunch to the sound but not a bad crunch all right now let's hear a little bit of guitar Some of you guys out there in video land will go, that's not a very scientific test. Not very scientific at all. And it's not. I'm not trying to measure anything with meters or anything like that or frequency response. We're just using our ears and going, hey, you know, how's that sound? That sounds good. And that's what you go with. You go, oh, I like that. I'm going to use it. You know, that's got how we're going to use this information today. Use it. And this microphone has a different color. If you're using a, a any other microphone, they're going to have different colors. So you're thinking, knowing what I know about microphone cables and colors, and I have a palette of microphone cables, which one do I use? Any old one, just take, and then I'll just EQ it later in the mix and just go, I'll fix it later. Or can I make informed choices about the ingredients of my signal path and then go, it's perfect, and I do less in post because I have a magic signal path that I like to use that gets the sound that I want to get because I chose the analog chain carefully. And that's always the most important step of getting stuff into your, your, your workflow when you're mixing and recording is always consider your analog signal path and microphone cables are often overlooked. So thank you for watching today. I think that's it. And See you next time. <laughs>